Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. I'm gonna give you my financial opinions. We're gonna work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs uh, that I follow. If you guys need any help with anything commodity related, definitely check out finding-value.com. You can use the word discount uh, in the coupon code for the platinum membership uh, if you'd like to join. And join our community and have fun. We've got a platinum question and answer session coming up on Sunday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Let's dive in. Let's see what the heck is going on today. Uh, we do have a strengthening dollar or DXY. It's a relative strength indicator. It does look like that's going to continue to strengthen here. So we've got, uh, I put a, a trend line, this resistance support line coming across here. It's a long-term support level that we can see was used multiple times throughout history. And even recently, we've hit it a couple times too. So this will act as strong support for the DXY. We came all the way down, we hit it as support, and we're starting to come back up. Uh, we are coming up with some vengeance, nice strong move, and I do think that move is going to continue to the upside. The DXY is tied to yields, so we should see a strengthening of yields tied with this stronger DXY dollar. So the 10-year yield rocketing higher today, up 3.37%. I'm quite surprised at how fast this thing is moving from 3.4 all the way to almost 4% on the on the 10 year yield. Uh, we've broken out of this pattern to the upside. It is cruising. It's rocketing higher. Uh, what that means is people are either selling bonds or the buyers have no appetite for bonds or a combination of those two things. Uh, yields rising is a resultant of, of lower demand or increased supply or a combination of those two things. So that's definitely looking higher. Now, from a long term, guys, this looks very bullish. We've This is logarithmic on yields broken out. We've broken out and we've come back and we've got a nice big bullish engulfing ready to launch higher with yields. That's pretty crazy, to be honest. <laughs> Yields do look like they are going to go higher here. Uh, they look very strong uh, in the in the short term and even in the long term. Uh, the 30-year the yield also rocketing higher up 2.3%. Uh, that looks very much the same. Uh, big long-term downtrend break. You can see we've pulled up. We had a consolidation. We're getting a nice big fat up candlestick on a monthly perspective. On the weeklies, they're pretty strong, and on the dailies, they're strong as well, moving to the upside of this broken consolidation pattern, uh, moving higher. So that looks really good. I expect the, the dollar to strengthen as well. Uh, we've got bond prices, which move inverse to yields, and that, that does not look good. Uh, they are still uh, heading lower here in the short term. Looking at the TYX-TNX ratio, it is dropping. And that generally indicates that the curve is inverting. Uh, when, when this number is larger than this number, the curve is inverting. So uh, TNX went up more than TYX, and our curve is inverting uh, in the short term. Looking at commodity prices, the CRB index holding its own today, basically sideways, 0.34%. Uh, we've been just chopping sideways here for the past I'm going to say six, seven months. Looking at CRB to S&P 500, now stronger dollar, stronger yields. One would expect that to be a headwind for gold, a headwind for the overall markets like the S&P 500. Commodities, um, sometimes they, they kind of do well or could do well, I should say, either any mar under any market condition. Today, commodities outperform the S&P 500. Uh, because the S&P 500 went down. So maybe we're trying to put in some bottom. I, I'm not there calling that this is the bottom yet, but maybe it's trying to put something in. We'll watch it and see if we can break out of this little downtrend channel that we're in. Gold, uh, slightly lower, six down $6.2 uh, per ounce. This does look like it's trying to 
put in some sort of bottoming, you know, movement. Um, we're still early, highly depends on yields and the dollar. You know, I'm not going to say that it is bottomed. Um, I'm kind of just reserved right now. Uh, with, the, with the yields going up like they are, we could see a further pullback in gold and the DXY heading higher. And remember, gold is priced in dollars in this, uh, the way that we're measuring it here. Silver, uh, also moving sideways today. It's up 0.1%. Uh, we're right at support. That, that blue line of support going across, um, that's the short-term line right here going across. And we're right on support, um, feeling it out. Platinum up a little bit better today, up $18, up 2%. It's putting a little wick at the bottom there on the monthly. Uh, but there we are coming on up. And, you know, I, I'm not convinced on anything at the moment. Um, yields going up like that is pretty ridiculous. We could see a pretty big move in yields. Um, with that breakout, which then in turn, the DXY will be stronger. But platinum's up higher today. It, there's no clear bottoming type pattern or anything here. Uh, we're kind of just bouncing around. And then the XEU to gold ratio, slightly lower. It still to me looks like we could see further downside in this ratio where gold and silver mining companies could underperform gold, especially with those higher yields. GDX, slightly lower. There we are today. Um, I'm looking for support and we've got support in here a little bit. It's not a ton. I'd say strong support levels are at $25 a share for GDX. SILJ also heading a little bit lower. Uh, we do have some support in the area that it's at right kind of right below us. So there's a little bit of support underneath us, but, uh, the trend is still definitely lower to the downside and I expect further downside. Uh, with the candlesticks that are showing up in front of me. Crude oil slightly lower today, down 0.5%. Um, most everything's slightly lower today. Big picture view, um, we've got this kind of megaphone pattern, or maybe it is a Jesse Livermore accumulation cylinder. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't go a little bit lower. It doesn't have to stop where I've, drew, where I've drawn this line. Uh, this obviously could come down here. It could even retrace, retrace all the way back uh, into this general vicinity in the 40s even if there is some sort of ridiculous fear or or something in the markets now i'm not calling for that i'm just saying it's a possibility but right now we are just chugging sideways uh going back and forth natural gas has not bottomed yet uh pretty strong sell off, uh sell off today down nine percent we're at two bucks basically two dollars and six cents on natural gas I do think it could head lower. And we have to cut back natural gas production in order to, I, I, I would say, we have to cut back natural gas production. We've got inventories that are quite full over in Europe. But we do have China reopening. We do have substitution of natural gas burning instead of coal. And we, we do have some of that going on right now. So we'll, we'll see where this thing bottoms out. It has not bottomed yet. XOP, yeah, you know me. These are the oil and gas exploration production companies, obviously down today with oil uh, and natural gas being down as much as it is. We're still in this uptrend line pattern here. We're still heading up, but this very well could break down and we could do um, an inverted head and shoulders here. So what that looks like is we came down here, we came up, broke down, and we could be moving back down to this portion here uh, and to come back up it's basically the inverse of this flipped over uh, i don't know if i drew that in properly but so we we very well could even test a, a 107 it and or a 105 or something like that in the future if natural gas keeps pulling lower and if if oil joins in the mix too so that is a possibility we could come back down a little bit uh, in the short term OIH, which is the energy service companies, they also sold off 1.9%. There we are, heading a little bit lower. We've got support right underneath us, a whole bunch of it. And we're, we're right there at the support level. Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, we are coming up to resistance at some point. Uh, the, the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust actually doesn't look too bad. That's not a reversal candlestick. We've got some buying pressure. It is working its way higher. We are coming into 
resistance at 1818 and slightly below it. We've sold off here multiple times before. And then looking at URNM, this isn't faring as well, but this is a continuation pattern in the middle here for a, a further sell off. We can obviously see that um, looking backwards there. So it's a flag pattern. And then we sold off, and I think we will we could come back to this general vicinity there. So URNM uh, definitely getting the short-term selling pressure, and I do think that we'll probably see a little bit more uh, to the downside left in it. TAN with those higher yields, we are right on support. So we'll see if that support holds. Uh, if you look to the left-hand side, we did touch this support level at 50-ish dollars. This could come down before heading higher. That is a possibility just like this side. So think of a mirror image of copying it. And I think I can actually do that. Let me see if I can try to do that. So what if I do um, this here and it's about here. And then I take this and I'll I'll mirrored it. Nope, not mirror, it's flipped. Go back. All right, let me grab it and go to flipped. There we go. And then flipped. Hold on, let me let me make sure this is right. I would say it's probably about here or so. And then what I want to do is I want to grab that guy. Now I want to flip this. No, 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 no. All right, guys, I'm not going to do that. It's taking too long. <clears throat> but this year, the way that this fell is going to, it, it could potentially happen on the other side as well. So then this could come all the way up like this if you mirror it across the, the center point there. COPX <clears throat> down uh, up a little bit, 0.38%. Big picture view, there we are with the double bottom. Um, it still looks good on the monthly perspective. On the weeklies, yeah, maybe we could get a little bit more downside left in this thing. I mean, the overall markets are selling off, so, um, and again, the way that this thing goes up could mirror similar to the way that it fell. Lithium, uh, LIT getting some selling pressure here. The overall market sold off to uh, S&P and NASDAQ. So we are falling down here. And we are at support level, basically, right at support almost. But we, we've got some momentum selling off here. Closed quite strong. REMX also right at support. There it is. And it is selling off a little bit in the short term. The S&P 500 definitely selling off today. Strong finish to the downside. I do expect this to continue lower with the stronger dollar and yields. Uh, we do have support coming up here with this trend line, and we'll see if that thing holds uh, down at 39.20. NASDAQ also selling off to the downside. This could be a return move. We'll see if that return move holds to the downside there. Uh, EEM also selling off. We're at support here uh, very soon. We're not quite there, but we're getting close to it. Uh, with those higher yields, home builders are not going to like those home uh, higher yields. Uh, mortgage rates went up quite a bit too. I think they're at 7.3%, which is astonishing in my opinion. Uh, but we're coming back to support and we'll probably test it around the 65-ish area. Moo, uh, slightly lower right at support of this trend line going across here. Surprisingly, copper is ripping it higher and it's actually looking very strong. I would say copper looks very strong from uh, the future standpoint. Lumber slightly lower. Uh, this does kind of track the home builders and with interest rates going up like they did, um, this is still a bullish formation on a bigger, longer term view. We've broken this pattern to the upside, but we could come back and do a retest down at 375. Uh, iron ore, 
There's iron ore. Let me uh, TI01. TL01. Iron ore. Let's go to iron ore. It's this one here. I don't know why it doesn't want to pull up new data, though. Anyway, um, that's where we're at, 7th of February, but we're at 125. We've actually broken out and we're up here, ready to go higher for iron ore. So that looks really good. Nickel uh, also turning up here. It is just grinding sideways. It broke out of this pattern to the downside. We ran down and now we're just basically moving sideways with nickel. Uh, aluminum also moving sideways. Still looks good. We're on top of everything. Uh, I would say everything is a okay there. Baltic dry index starting to try to turn back up. Is this a false breakout? Uh, we are very low on the Baltic dry index. It's probably the cheapest it's ever been in history uh, against other assets. Looking at coal, coal is obviously feeling the pressure of natural gas falling. So coal is going to fall with it, I think. And right now, I, I still think this is going to have a little bit more downside to go in coal and maybe even natural gas with that momentum behind it. Uh, Ethereum. Ethereum and Bitcoin slightly lower. Well, actually, good good amount lower. Uh, this does look like we could head lower in the short term. Uh, it's a bearish engul uh, engulfing pattern. So short term lower. Bitcoin also getting a little bit of selling pressure here. We could see that go lower as well, especially if we see interest rates and, and the dollar go up. So overall, guys, interest rates and the dollar rocketing higher today is going to put an overall massive headwind for everything in the market uh, that is related, that is interest rate related, which is a lot of things. Commodities are not as interest rate sensitive, but the credit that comes into the system is. So the, the money that's in the system that's, that's circulating uh, is obviously still feeding commodities, but uh, if you cut the credit off in the front half, which they are doing, uh, we've seen United States uh, housing starts has come down quite a bit. We're at 1.3 million. That is money and credit coming into the, the, we'll call it the front or one of the inputs for credit expansion. And that is slowing down some. That's not dead, but it is slowing down. And with the interest rates going up as high as they are and as fast as they are, that's going to put the brakes on a lot of things in the market. Definitely the overall market like the S&P 500, uh, NASDAQ, Ethereum and Bitcoin, you can see it's selling off. Um, those are definite headwinds, and they it, it, and it can impact the commodities market as well if everything is selling off. But that's what we've got for today, guys. And if you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, check out the website if you'd like. And I uh, hope you guys are hanging in there. All right, guys. We'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.